studying Indian classical dance. Mm -hmm. I was never really taught choreography. Oh. It's hard to teach choreography because it's yeah. so personal. Yeah. You can learn other people's choreography that's handed down, other great artists' choreography. Yeah. So a lot of my Guruji stuff would be from Maharaji mm -hmm. and from his gurus. Mm -hmm. The thing that I would say also with the Katha Kendra and the Kumidini Lakya students is there was a very strong um, kind of guru mm. that was constantly mm. guiding them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I want to, want to know your relationship with your mom. Mm -hmm. um, because a v sometimes a voice is born, or for my case, voice was born, my voice mm -hmm. started going, hi, I'm here, uh -huh. I have a voice. Yeah. Um, somehow once I could separate myself yeah. from such a strong voice that was always the voice that I listened to. Yeah. I couldn't hear my voice there. Huh. Was that the same case with you or? I mean, I think in a different way than yours. Like, I don't think her voice was ever like imposed Your on mom. me. Yeah. Yeah. She always gave me a lot of like uh, creative freedom and like freedom to kind of voice my opinion. I mean, not, she didn't give me the freedom, but I took it because I was her kid. <laughs> but like, I always disagreed with her. Like, once I got over the being obsessed with her and I started really thinking thinking, I guess, in a certain way. Um, like, I would disagree a lot with her choices. Mm -hmm. and, and then especially when I started taking dance full time, like, for her, it's always about speed, always about filling things up. Like, a Nataraja piece means you do all the poses, you always have knee turns. And so I think something became like a response to that. Like, I wanted to go the opposite way. So I started doing things really slow or really internal or really, like, I was just kind of like, okay, like, it felt like too much to me. Mm -hmm. And also when I would dance it, I'd feel like tired and uncomfortable. And, you know, like, it didn't feel, so then it, once I started doing my own choreography, then I was like, oh my God, like, I actually enjoy dancing more. It felt less torturous, mm -hmm. you know? And so then I think, like, I started realizing my voice is very different from hers. When I watch classical dance, mm -hmm. um, there are layers of glass, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which then takes me time to get mm -hmm. through the first glass, mm -hmm. second glass, mm -hmm. third glass, fourth glass, because the deeper the, deeper the artist, the more layers there are, mm -hmm. until there's no glass, until I've gone through it. Mm -hmm. When I watch, let's say, something other than classical, mm -hmm. there is no glass. Mm -hmm. So it's an immediate connection if mm -hmm. the artist is good. Mm -hmm. But the misconception is, from a classical perspective, that there's no layers. There are no glasses. Ah, uh, I see. But there are layers yeah. if the artist is good. Yeah. Um, it's just that you're in it. Yeah. You, go in, you, you connect you go right straight in. away. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they're asking the very questions of what's happening outside in the world. So they become a mirror yeah. that you identify with. Yeah. And you go in. Yeah. And then once you're in, mm -hmm. you start to see layers of glass, mm. of metaphors. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that's an after effect, mm, okay, yeah. rather than an immediate effect of, hang on. Um, because the context, the mythology, yeah. is not directly r relatable to right now. Yeah, yeah. You have to go through a process of patience and going through, do you feel the same? Yeah, 100%. And I think a lot of I think a lot of it has to, when we come to like classical repertoire is that we're so obsessed with structure, right? Like a vadnam or a jati. Like we're we're so obsessed with the repertoire, and like that repertoire came about in from our ancestors and the isevelalers who are the hereditary performers. This was their reality. So when we talk about like art being connected to life, to them that was their art being connected to life. But then we erased them from the equation and we just took like their repertoire and now that's what we perform. And like there's a certain nostalgia, right? Like everyone keeps telling me, do the margam, do the margam, do a varnam, do a varnam. But like the varnam is a nostalgic structure that we love and we appreciate because we've grown up learning it, we've grow up, grown up watching it. But it's not directly connected to like everyday life. But of course we can find stuff within it. We can find longing and desire and love and whatever. But it's not a direct response to like, you know, what's happening. And so I think that Partly it's the structures that we learn and we study and we grow to love that become like many of those walls. So is that what you're doing? Are you asking, are you questioning, are you trying to discover new structures? I think so. I do have questions and I want to explore my entry point into those. 
you know, we must transcend the physical body and we should see the dance, not the dancer. But like we're showing you the dancer, you know? And, and keep going because this is what <laughs> she is auspicious is kind of. Yeah, 100% is like even this idea of like, yeah, the beauty and the refinement, like, is that all? Like, wh where, like, where is the effort? Where is the ugliness? Where is the contradiction? Where is, like, the, like, the rage? Where is the, like, all of these things that we actually feel in real life, like, we have to all put that into something and kind of say, no, no, that doesn't exist. Like, you know, this is what exists. And so, for me, She's Auspicious is, like, a questioning of those things that I have embodied myself and I have, you know, appreciated or valued myself. One of the... Um most important moments of my life um, was when I was 13, mm. working with Peter mm. Brook. I felt he was the, not the invisible, but in a sense, the invisible mentor. Mm. Mm. Um, and doing the thing, his work, sorry, mm -hmm. of the Mahabharat mm -hmm. is one thing. Doing the thing. <laughs> but um, listening to how he sees the piece mm -hmm. and how he deconstructs it mm -hmm. and how he questions it, mm -hmm. I think gave birth in my own self mm -hmm. of how, how come I never thought of it like I didn't know you could see it like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the idea of um, understanding a story, mm -hmm. what that story is, mm -hmm. and then why that story is, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then as I always say, how do you deliver that story, mm -hmm. came really from listening to him mm. um, and then when we were practicing it was not so much the notes he was giving me mm -hmm. it was the notes that he was giving the really good actors mm. the senior actors that when I'm watching you're going how did he see that mm. to give him that note yeah I would never have noticed that yeah so he didn't say to me Akram look yeah this is what I'm looking for yeah so because when you're looking, when you say, look at this, this is what I'm looking for, you're looking at the hand, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. at the point, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So there wasn't that pressure. It was almost like be, I was learning by being a fly on the wall. Mm. And one of the things I try to do is to perhaps recreate that scenario mm -hmm. where we invited you into Outwitting the Devil, mm -hmm. but it wasn't simply to work with you as a dancer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was to give you an access mm -hmm. to the way myself, Maven, um, Ruth, mm -hmm. how we perhaps generate mm -hmm. a narrative mm -hmm. or work on a narrative. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts about this process of how process, we came together? How that together? has affected yeah, me. The mentorship. Of course, I have Malaka, who's like my mentor and just given me so much. But like, there's something in your dance that I felt like, yeah, I mean, I wanted that. You know, and, and, and there is, yeah, I mean, in so many ways, I, I felt like, okay, this is something that I want. I want. And it's important to clarify because yeah. in, it doesn't cancel at all yeah. your love and what you get from Malika. No. Because I can't give that. No, no, not at She's all. She's so yeah. specific and special. Yeah. Um, but it's a particular lens. Yeah. And mine is a particular lens yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. And it, but, but the thing with yours is that, like, it's, it felt like another side of me that I could relate to, and I felt like I wasn't fully like able to access through my form you know and I appreciated that you came you come from like such a strong classical training and you work within like within like Indian mythology I mean various mythology but also Indian mythology and also with like a, an aesthetic of Indian music as well so there was always something that I could connect to as a classical dancer and with like my American identity I felt like it was it was a synthesis that like I felt connected to and so I really appreciated that you like wrote back and you said like I don't generally mentor people but I invite them into a process. So I was like, oh yeah, I hope one day like I can be invited into a process. And then with Jwala, it was just I feel like that just happened like that you invited me to perform that in the Darbar festival and then like just like I asked you to see the piece, right? So just the questions you were asking of like my own work, I think for me it was important that that was an entry point because that was the beginning of like understanding your process of questioning which is like I think hugely it's become a voice in my head that's like constantly like you always say use the word interrogation but that's like such an amazing thing right because it really allows you to take things apart and um, in terms of collaboration yeah how has that changed your way of collaborating with other with our artists who are working with you for you 
Um, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, did, I never thought of it as like a conscientious, like because I saw you collaborating, I wanted to do it myself. But I think it's been, it's become a part of it. Like with, with this year's work particularly, like Arda, Pupu, and One All, like I've, I craved that collective sense, you know, because like there's only so much you get when it's just you. Mm -hmm. And like, of course, a mentor opens that up even more. But I think when you are sharing the space with other people and you feel their, because um, that's what we saw in Outwitting the Devil, you like, we all made the material, right? And you, you put it all together and you directed it and you, you instigated it, but it came, for, the characters were built out of us, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so, so I love- So you became authors of your own character. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I love that. And I think like even just seeing how when I did this year work with my musicians in a more collaborative way, particularly with Pupu, mm -hmm. like I noticed that it felt different when material was generated out of somebody. Yeah.